Hey, I want you to have a seat and listen very closely to this video because I'm about to show you exactly what you need to do before you get paid step by step. Do this every time and I promise you, you'll see an immediate improvement in your personal finances. If you're new here, my name is Reggie Bryant. Welcome to the show where I talk about personal finance and personal growth to help you better yourself every day so you can live life on your own terms. Let's get into this video. One of the first lessons I've learned about money is that you have to have a plan with it. And that plan has to start way before that money even hits your bank account. Now, before I pull my tablet out and show you how it's done, I'm gonna give you a very clear picture of what will happen if you don't have a plan. You'll do just like I did when I was 21 and you'll overspend on rent, you'll miss out on savings, and you'll miss out on the opportunities that could open the doors to the life that you've been dreaming of in exchange for being just like everyone else, regular. That was the path I was going down simply because I didn't have a plan. That was when I knew I needed to change something because on this channel, we better ourselves every single day and we work hard. And here's the thing, we don't work hard to become regular. So here's what I came up with. So before you get paid, the thing to be aware of is exactly how much money you make every single month. So we're working with this number you see right here, right? But you have to remember this number needs to be translated to after taxes. And this is just an example, but we'll say it's 4,500 after taxes. And that sounds actually about right. So that's the real number we're working with. So we're gonna go ahead and delete all of this mess right here. We're gonna erase that. So this number is gonna stay up here. And this is what we're gonna to use to keep this example as realistic as possible when it comes to financial planning. This is where a lot of people mess up at. So I wanna make this part very clear and simple for you so you don't make those same mistakes. Here's what you need to know. If you make $100,000 a year, you don't really make $100,000 a year. Cause what's gonna happen is good old Uncle Sam's gonna come knocking on your door asking you where his money is. You're going to give it to them too. If you don't, they'll lock you up, hit you in the kneecaps, force you to pay it. Now, I know you know that, but that's something a lot of us don't think about when it comes to how much we make a year. But also, check this out. If you work overtime, that number that you put at the top of the page needs to be how much you get paid before overtime. I will always discourage you from making any financial plans based off of overtime because overtime at work is extra and it's never guaranteed. I don't care if you've been having overtime unlimited for the last 20 years at your job. Guess what? One day somebody can just wake up one morning, have a wild hair and just say, you know what? I want to cut expenses today. How do we do that? Uh, the easiest way is people cut overtime right now. That's all they have to do. And if you didn't know that, now you do. Here's one more thing before we move on to the most important part of the video. If you're someone who makes more than one stream of income, that number at the top of the page is gonna to need to be the income that you usually use to live off of, which is your primary income. All right, so step number two, every single dollar that you're about to make needs to go somewhere, not just anywhere, but somewhere that you want it to go. And the best way to get started doing this is by laying out every single thing that your money is absolutely needed to go towards, which in this case is going to be bills. Now here's the cool thing about this part. You really only need to do this one time. Once you do it once, you'll have a pretty much exact idea of how much money that you need to spend every single month. So I'll write down a few of my financial obligations for you right here. I'm gonna do that right now. And don't y'all be in the comments complaining about my handwriting either. Mm-hmm, I see y'all looking. So what I have right here, this is what I have as needs. And you might argue that phone bills aren't a need, but in my opinion it is. So I have it up here under bills. But anyways, basically with the, with the way that I look at it, what I like to do is I like to think of whatever comes to the top of my head. I write it down for necessities. Then I'll double check. I'll go through my bank account and I'll actually go to that and look at, okay, what else do I have as far as necessities goes? Because sometimes I do slip up and miss up on some things, which of course flows easily into the next step of this. And that's putting a price beside these bad boys. So right here, we're going to put prices. We're just going to make up prices for half of these, right? So rent, say 1100 utilities will say good. 200 car insurance it's about expensive we'll say 180 we'll go about 90 groceries 300 phone bill 111 completely just made those up off the top of my head 
Now what you do right here is you add all these bad boys up and the number you get down here, let me hold on a second, let me carry the two real quick. All right, you get 1981 for a nice price of all of these added up. Also, I made a quick change up here where it says monthly, just so y'all know this is a monthly type of plan we're talking about right here. Once you add those numbers up, that's pretty much the number you can expect to spend every single month, no matter what. Now, some months you're obviously going to need to pay a little more on needs, like you might have car maintenance fees, getting your oil changed, stuff like that, that obviously stand out a couple times a year. That's a little different. We're not focusing on that in this video. We're purely focusing on what you consistently spend money on every month. Now real quick, that number you just got from adding all of those bills up, I want you to really focus on this one thing that I don't think anyone really thinks about. And as a result, they miss out on keeping this number as low as possible. Now as you can see, I have groceries written down right here, right here. And you know, it says 300 right next to it and it, that number represents how much I want to spend at the very maximum on groceries. And I do not wanna go over that number, period. Now what I want you to do is when you have an expense like this, I want you to take it and circle it. I even added red for dramatic effect. Here's the thing, when you have a necessity that isn't a fixed expense, something that you actually have some control over, the best thing you can do is write a number beside it and don't go over that number. Hold yourself to that number and that's how you control your finances. Outside of groceries, another really good example of this would be something like the cost of transportation, whether that's the cost of gas, the cost to charge your car if you have an electric car or public transportation. All right, so low key my laptop just died on me. Ah, so I had to go to drastic measures, you know what I'm saying? But you still see that I got the red outline so you know it's real. Now look right here, this is one of my secrets, right? So once you have a couple of these circled and outlined, okay, now you can come up with a very quick, like a super quick plan on how you're gonna stick to these numbers right here. Like for me, I know for a fact I can go a week and a half without filling up on gas, right? So that's about 10 days. So I know that every time I fill up gas, it, when it's at its lowest point, I know that I spent at the very maximum $25. So that means every 10 days and every month that happens three times, right? So 10, 10, 10, and you don't have to do all this. I'm just being extra 25, 25, 25 so i should realistically don't judge my five so realistically i'm only really expecting to spend 75 but 90 is that maximum i just have set for myself but i don't want to go over that number let me show you another example i mean this right here i know i go grocery shopping a couple of times a month and by a couple of times i mean like pretty much once a week but they differ drastically like sometimes i'll spend 70 dollars. so week one I spend seven dollars week two is going to be more like thirty dollars and then it literally just repeats week three seventy now my pen's starting to die you, you see how everything is against me today it's, it's okay we still gonna win though anyways see i'm putting holes through this sheet anyways and then uh week four another 30 right so what i'm saying is i really only expect to spend 200 but at the very most, these are the numbers that I want to spend if I had to max them out. That's a huge secret weapon of mine. And here's the thing about that. It's a little tricky sometimes. Like you will probably make a few mistakes and mess some things up a few times before you actually get it right. But the whole reason behind doing all that is, is knowing that you have direct control over any of the numbers that you circle. And once you work with controlling a number on a consistent basis, you'll find that you start to improve. You start to get better and better at it. And before you know it, you'll have it down to a science and it'll be completely second nature to you. So that's the most important thing you need to do before you get paid. And that's predetermine the amount of money that you're automatically gonna spend every single month. Now, once you get to this point, this is actually where it gets pretty fun. This is a little challenge I used to give myself before I got paid every time. And it started with this question. How much money do I want to save this month? Now at the time, I wanted to save my first $20,000, so I challenged and pushed myself to save at least $1,000 a month. I figured, well, I already have a good $10,000 saved up, so if I just save $1,000 every month, I'll easily be able to hit my $20,000 goal by the end of the year. Why was that my goal? Because honestly, I really just wanted to have a couple years worth of rent saved up just in case something happened. Your why might be completely different than mine. 
But whether your reason is because you want more family time, you want to go on a tropical vacation, or if you just simply want a financial cushion in your bank account, you have to attach an amount of money to it. It's easy to do that once you've already figured out how much money you're automatically going to be spending every single month, right? But here's the thing. Here's something else you're going to need to do to make sure you can save what you want to save. That's writing down all the extra expenses that automatically go out of your bank account as well. So in addition to your needs, you're going to put stuff down like, think about, you know, Audible. Think about streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. I'm writing down a few of mine right now. And honestly, I don't have a ton of them, but you know, something I do have is my editing software, Premiere Pro. So once you have these written down, you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to put a price next to each of them. Cool thing with these is you'll start to see a pattern and you'll automatically know just by looking at each extra thing you automatically spend money on every month, you'll know for a fact which ones you use and which ones you don't use. Then you know what you do? You decide for yourself if you're going to continue to pay for all of these extra services or if you're going to get rid of some of them because you're going to look at some of these and say, now I know good and well I should have got rid of some of these two years ago. I know. There's probably two things right now that you can cancel your subscriptions on that you don't even realize you're still paying for. That's why this exercise is so important. Now there's one thing you can't ignore with these extra expenses. Now here's the thing, in addition to these right here, remember, these are fixed costs right here. These are stuff that you can't really control the price unless you just completely eliminate them, which in my case, I'm not getting rid of any of them because I need all of them. Now. What we're going to add is what we can completely control. Just like we did over here and we circled them in red, we're going to do right over here. And that's stuff like fast food, restaurants, and entertainment. I've already outlined them because, you know, actually, I was actually doing this. And then I realized my camera wasn't recording, but the show must go on. You know what I'm saying? I'm making all kinds of mistakes today, but it's all good. We're going to circle all of these in red because we need that dramatic effect. And again, I've given prices that I usually want to spend every month. You can put whatever prices you want to, but this is what I, what I generally spend because I don't really do too much with any of these. Now, I separate fast food and restaurants just because... There's a difference between getting something to eat on the fly and getting something to eat real quick versus actually sitting down, eating something, maybe having a conversation with somebody. Totally different experiences, so I budget two different things for those. And then for entertainment, you know, I don't really do a whole lot, but this is for stuff like going to the movies, you know, going out to a comedy club or something, going out for drinks, whatever the case may be that you see as entertainment. I don't really do a, a ton, so I actually made this one the cheapest one because I spend way more money on food. Now, once again, we're going to add these bad boys up. So give me a second. Let me go ahead and carry the two that should be. Yeah, that's $347.99, just like I thought. Okay, cool. So now what you do is you add this number all the way to this number right here. Carry the two. And we got $2,328.99. You know what I'm saying? So that's the true number that you're going to spend every single month. Once you get that number, I want you to subtract it from the amount of money you expect to get every single month, which is the same exact number we put on the top of the page right here. And that number is going to tell you the full story. It's going to answer the question we all want to know. Is my goal attainable based off of my spending right now? So we're going to take this 4500 right here, and we're going to subtract it by this number right here. And this is what we're going to get. I had to carry the two a little bit, do the calculations off screen, but here we go. We get a healthy 2171 So obviously my goal of reaching that $1,000 a month is very attainable, even after spending on my necessities and on my extras every month. Everyone's different, but to my surprise, I was easily able to reach my $1,000 goal every single month. That's if I were to actually follow my plan, of course. Problem is, I used to deviate from my plan a lot because even though I decided how much money I wanted to save and even though I decided how much money I was going to spend on necessities and extras every single month, I didn't plan for anything else outside of that. For example, me and a bunch of friends went to our college homecoming about a year after we graduated. I didn't plan for that because I didn't expect to be going out with friends because I pretty much worked every day at my old job. I definitely didn't plan for shoes, clothes, or investing. Like whatever money I had for it, I just put it towards it whenever I wanted to because I just felt like I was doing pretty good for myself. And that's where I messed up at. That's how I started losing $600 every month consistently. And I would even go as far as say that's where we all mess up at. Unforeseen impulses and unforeseen expenses. Look, let me tell you something. 
This is something that I will never forget because this is something my uncle taught me a long time ago. One of the biggest lessons I've had in personal finance. There always needs to be a buffer that you expect to pay over what you already expect to pay. And that's for everything, not just your monthly bills. I'm talking if you go on a flight somewhere, if you go out to eat somewhere, if you go out to an amusement park, if you go to the Grand Canyon, expect to pay more than you think you're going to be paying. So there's two things I'm going to show you real quick, and then I got to go edit this video. All right, rule number one. This whole number you just came up with with your necessities plus your extras added together, this number right here, yeah, you're going to want to add $100 to that. which pretty much means you're gonna deduct $100 from this. So really it should be 2070. That's really how much you're gonna be saving. Now me personally, what I like to do is instead of 100, I like to add 400 to this number right here, which makes it 2728.99. And when you deduct from this number 400, because you added 400 here, let me carry the two real quick. That's really 1771, which is still really good and healthy for my goal. Now, I personally like to add 400 to that number just because I'm an extreme person and I expect extreme things to happen in my life. So I've just always overestimated my expenses. I'm not saying you should do that, but that's what works for me in my mental chaos. Now, rule number two, we're gonna write down all of our wants. It doesn't matter how big or small, just write them down and attach a price to each one. And again, these are just examples. These are very realistic examples of what somebody would want because, you know, entertainment purposes or getting more work done or being more productive. These are all really good things to have, but they're pricey and they're not needs. Now, the reason I want you to write your wants down is because what you're doing is you're creating a catalog of wants that you buy periodically. That way you won't end up unexpectedly buying those brand new Nike shoes that you've been wanting just because they were on sale and now you're set back on your savings goals all because you jumped the gun on something you could have waited for. It's time for some tough love. And you know, this happens all the time. And it seems harmless at first, right? Because you probably got that dope pair of shoes for 10% off, right? But you might have gotten that dope pair of shoes for $200 that you still didn't have, which means you really didn't save anything at all. In fact, because of this, now you set yourself back an entire month worth of savings, which could have been $200 in your savings account. But that's not a big deal, right? Well, it wouldn't be a big deal if it was a one-time thing, but the problem is it's not a one-time thing. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what happens when you don't plan this out. One month, it's a new pair of shoes. The next month, it's a new TV. Another month goes by. Now it's a new watch. Another month, a new suit. And what happens is it seems like it's okay because there's no immediate impact on your life until you've missed out on saving $2,000 and boom, your car breaks down. And you're just sitting in there with your brand new wardrobe, your fresh shoes that you just spent the last few months paying for and everything. Not realizing that $2,000 would have came in handy because now you have to find something to fix your radiator. But now you're just on the side of the road with smoke coming out of your car and everything. Looking sick. But hey, at least you got fresh clothes on. And I'm not even making this up. I've literally seen this happen before. But anyway, you know why I really want you to write your wants down? It's because I don't want you confusing your temporary wants with your long-term goals. If you really want to buy a house, there's not a single thing on that list that should stop you from getting it. And since everything on that list has a price attached next to it and you can see it, then you know exactly how much each thing on that list can set you back. Some won't really set you back at all, but some of the more expensive ones will set you back months, maybe even years. Another reason I want you to write those down is so you can actually set up a separate plan to get the things that you want. And check this out. I always say avoid spending money out of pocket for things that you want. But if you really wanna know how to avoid spending money out of pocket to get the things that you want, make sure you check out my video that I made specifically about that it breaks everything down and it breaks down what I've done to get free AirPods, these lights behind me for free and more. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.